If you've been following along, you know that I bought this old CJ7 and it had all the emissions and the computer controlled carburetor taken off and they also swapped out the distributor from uh, electronic ignition to uh, points style ignition. So consider this like a pre-75 Jeep inline 6 and uh, we're going to do a complete ignition tune up on it here. I'm taking off the distributor cap and all the plug wires a lot of times I would suggest that you if you're just swapping cap and wires maybe do one wire at a time so that you get them all in the right spot but all we have to do here is make note of where number one is and we'll get the firing order right because we've got this video to play along with so taking off the cap and wires making sure we know where one was and we'll remove the rotor it just pulls off There's the old rotor. A little burned up on the end, not nothing terrible, but we're going to replace it. Then we're going to loosen the screw on the points here that holds the wires in. There's two wires, one that runs over to the coil and one that runs the, to the condenser. Once they're removed, we can remove the points. There's one screw that holds those in, and you've got to be careful not to drop that screw down into the distributor. So use a magnetized screwdriver if you can, if not uh, just kind of make sure you hold that screw as you loosen it. And don't lose that screw. There's the points. The rub block that runs on a cam on the distributor that opens and closes those contact points at the end. Then we can remove the condenser. Again, tiny little screw. Be careful not to drop it. New condenser does not come with a new screw. The condenser is just a capacitor, one wire, and then it completes a circuit through the ground to the distributor case. And we'll reinstall our new install our new points. If you can buy the uh, brass ones, makes better contact. We're not going to tighten that screw completely. We're just going to snug it up so that we can adjust the points in and out. You want a little bit of tension there, not completely tight. Then we can use a screwdriver in this slot to adjust the points in and out. And we have to have the motor turned to where the rub block of the points is riding on one of the cam lobes. And I don't do a real good job of showing that here, but just put a wrench on the bolt that holds the harmonic balancer in and turn the motor until the points are opened, all the way opened. If you have to, adjust them a little bit. And I'm using a feeler gauge here. The recommended point gap is 16 thou. And you've got to get it just right. If you need to, you stick a screwdriver in that slot and twist it one way or another to give it more or less gap or more or less dwell. do that and then check it again with your feeler gauge. Here you can see it's a little bit tight. It kind of moves the points a little bit when I put that 16 thou in there. Just a little tight. So we'll adjust it again. Sticking that screwdriver in the slot and twisting. Just a little bit. Keep doing that until you've got it right. And this is just our initial setting. We're going to check it later with a dwell meter. But a lot of times this gets done fine, just setting the point gap. Back in the day, people would use their uh, matchbook cover to set their point gap. So, I mean, yes, it's important to get it right, but and we will with a dwell meter, but setting that gap is very important. And we'll put the condenser on. We'll go ahead and snug up the screw for the points. Reinstall our wires, the one from the coil and the one from the condenser. We'll tighten that screw. We'll reinstall our rotor. Again, buy a brass one if you can. 
our distributor cap this will only go on one way the brass screw on this model goes towards the engine the white colored screw or silver colored screw aluminum colored screw whatever is away from the engine We're going to go ahead and swap out the plugs too. <clears throat> go along and bust them all loose and then uh, take them out. We'll inspect those. On this model, or on this engine, they all looked real good, so who knows if the last owner had just changed them or what, but uh, they look good enough. I think I'm going to keep them. Put them back in the boxes from the new ones and uh, keep them inside the Jeep for a trail spare. You never know when you're going to flood it, especially running points ignition. So the new plugs, we've got to set the point gap. Let me do that with a feeler gauge. If you have to, you bend the, bend the little ground strap in or out to get your point gap cracked. And I like to put a little lubricant on the threads and run them in by hand, get them finger tight. And there's a new crush washer on these spark plugs. So you run it in finger tight and then about a quarter turn more with a ratchet. Do all six. And then another trick. Use a little dielectric grease on a Q-tip and lube up the rubber boot just a little bit on each rubber boot before we install the new plug wires. This will help them come off better later. You don't got to get it in all the way on the metal part, just on the rubber boot. And we remembered where plug number one was on the distributor, so we got to get that right and then we just go through the standard firing order on a Jeep 153624 and I'll just plug each wire in in order 153624 going clockwise around the distributor and as you do this make sure the boots are pulled back and so there's enough wire sticking out to get down into the connector on the distributor press them all the way down in then you can always push the boot back in further but make sure that the wire gets all the way down into the distributor cap same thing on the plugs, make sure it kind of snaps onto the spark plug cap. Get all six of those and then hook the coil wire up, the middle one goes to the coil. When we're done replacing everything, now we can uh, check our dwell. We're going to use an old dwell meter I had. I haven't used this in over 20 years. Had to wipe a lot of dirt off it. Got to set the six cylinder over on dwell, and then it just plugs onto the leads on the coil. Red and a black, little alligator clips. <clears throat> We're looking for 31 to 34 degrees on this engine. Nailed it. Spend enough time on that point gap, you'll probably get it right. If not, you got to take the cap off, readjust it again. Last thing I'm going to do is check the timing. I'm not going to explain that a whole lot. You probably know how to do that. If not, there's plenty of videos. But this video is getting long. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. There's going to be plenty more Jeep videos. Uh, click on the gear button if you want to get a t-shirt or a hat. And if this video is helpful to you, maybe buy me a beer. Jeep on!